Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. We've got us a 2018 Chevrolet. It's the Trax. It's got the big 1.4 and it's got a leaking water pump. We'll start out by getting rid of the air box over here. So we'll loosen up this clamp. A classic 7 millimeter. I think we can leave it attached here. And get a little uh, pick here for us. Unhook our mass airflow. Christmas tree fastener here. We'll see if we can't get it unhooked. Come on, baby. There's that. And I do believe that this is just held in right there. We've got this little guy up here. I don't know what holds it on up here. Just a couple little push tabs there, it looks like. It's up and out, and that exposes our engine mount, which is what we're going for. Pop this motor mount up here. You're gonna need the support underneath the oil pan with a jack. Uh, in my case, I'm using a jack stand because I have it on the lift, and a little block of wood. We're gonna cut this loose. Just in case I'm wrong. We're going to leave a middle one in there a little bit just to catch it in case it does something stupid. Everybody's happy, it looks like. Peel this out of the way. Now, we need to raise the engine up a little bit. We need to get this mount off in order to get the belt off to get to the water pump, which is over here. So I'll try to get you guys in a little better position, but stand by, I'm gonna let the car down a little here. And that raises up the engine. So if you have a floor jack, you have to, you know, jack the engine up. Just be mindful of everything, particularly like the CV axle. That's probably about it. Um, from the AC compressor is a little tight there. So just be careful when you're jacking it up. You can overstretch stuff. So this is about as far as we're going to go. I think it's as far as we have to go. We'll be able to. We'll probably have to, you know, give this one a handy down there with a ratchet. But I think we'll be okay. Looks to be about three bolts holding this thing on of the 15 mil variety. Got that one I'm way down yonder here. And the third one over here. feel like they might have Loctite on them. Nope, guess not. They're just a little stiff there in the beginning, so I'm going to take and spin these out. Whoa! Man down. Once you get them babies wiggled loose, I think this should fit right out of here. Hopefully. Get the right wiggling configuration of moving the bolts. Negative ghost rider. Uh, we do have to come up just a whisker. We have to release the tension of the tensioner. You're going to want to bust out your inverted torque. It's your classic E14. Let me just see here if that's the right size. It is the right size. And what I thought... I know you can put a pin in these tensioners to hold the tension in. I think we'll be safe. I don't know if that bolts onto the water pump. I think that does bolt onto the water pump. So we are gonna have to pin it because I think we have to remove it. So let me get a mirror. 
I'm pretty sure there's a spot you stick a pin. There is, and I know it's kind of a piss pot to line up, right? Is that to hold the, I've got to kind of remind myself here. Let's see, if I push that down, that just pins it in the timing cover. Okay, so that's not for removal, so it must be the pin goes in the top of the spring. All I know is if you do it wrong, it's a real piss pot to get these things back together. Okay, yeah, so I think that I think this is it. So I have, I don't know what size it is, I'll measure it for you, maybe 3 16ths or something. You could probably use a piece of an old broken drill bit, but you'll see where the spring protrudes up through. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna take the belt off. I'll show you here. I, I know you're not in optimal viewing position, but we both can't see, fella. That's that. Uh, stick this down here like so. I'm gonna remove the belt. My pin I'm gonna leave in the spring, and then I'm gonna take the tension off it. Okay, that doesn't really help you with belt removal or putting the belt on, but it's going to allow us to remove the tensioner. Uh, I do have a new belt for this lady, so I'm not concerned about marking it. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the bolt out of the tensioner. That holds it on the bolt where it pivots. So same size, not the, not the pulley bolt, but this is the upper bolt that holds the tensioner on. And there's a lower bolt too that takes a smaller inverted torque. Let's see what size that is, I'll get us one of those. So here's the bolt in the bottom of the tensioner. We'll take out the bolt in the top of the tensioner. So I think it goes through the water pump. I could be wrong. Could be just wasting time here, but we could look in service data too. Okay, so here's your tensioner assembly. This is where the pin goes. Like I say, it's just use a drill bit or an Allen key or whatever you've got to stick in that hole. But if you don't, then the whole thing stretches out until it hits the top of this T which holds it all together. You know, it's kind of a crap, <laughs> it's kind of a chintzy design, I should say, but, you know, compress it, put a pin in there to hold it, and that that just allows you to put it together easier because if you let this thing go, it grows another half of an inch, and it's a real bear to get this bolt in and this bolt. It's not impossible, but it ain't easy. Well, that didn't sound like it hit the floor. That sucks. Hopefully we can see it. Oh, I can see it. So we have our pulley and then three bolts that hold it on. Try to make it so you guys can see a little better here. Let's just get rid of this. Does that give you a little better view? Pop, pop, gotcha. Step one is drain your coolant. If you haven't, well, get a bucket ready. We're gonna try to move this hose clamp back here. We'll just move it up on the water pump. Seems to be the easiest thing. I have not drained the coolant, so we're just gonna let it flow. I do have a bucket underneath there. As much as I could because the jack stands in the way, but rest assured we will dispose of it in accordance with local area federal state laws. We're gonna work this hose off here. Get our hose pick underneath it. Looks pretty crusty. Got quite the barb on it there. Let go, Barbara. Don't want to send a pick through your hand, so it's gonna keep smooching it around under there. Lots of corrosion. Hey, it's going in the bucket. Some of it is, anyways. Now I see on the front. We have the thermostat housing, and it appears to be a quick connect on that hose. Uh, I'm ugly, not stupid. You don't want to mess with those quick connects. We're just going to unbolt the housing from the water pump. It's going to be the easiest way. It's got it right full of the old universal antifreeze, unfortunately. Looks like about 10 bolts holding that water pump on. Lots of bolts. So let's unhook the uh, thermostat. 
I think in an effort to see a little bit better, we're gonna unplug some stuff here. Mostly for your benefit. See if we can get the gray lock tab out. A little bit. There's that. Got another little connector here. Might help us see what we're doing. Looks like a cam sensor perhaps. And then we have another connector with a red lock tab right up on top of the thermostat housing. We'll disengage the red lock tab. Push in on a little finger. All kinds of crap in the way over here. Let's see. All right, we've got that disconnected. Eh. There's that. I want to get this other connector out of the way just because because we can, because we're right here. There's that. Let's see if I can't get under the finger on it. Okay, so we have all three of these connectors. Uh, it's like a cam solenoid, cam sensor. Yeah, it's a three wire. And then the one on top of the thermostat. Now it is pretty snug over here. There is a hose on the back side of this thermostat housing. How do we want to do this? Um, these cars are very fragile. So they're kind of like Volkswagen. Anything you touch on breaks. So you try to want to touch as little as possible. Or the least amount of stuff that you can. I don't think we should fiddle with that quick connect, but I think we can get the lower radiator hose. I think we'll unhook it, we'll leave the housing right on it. So let's get down in here with our pliers. Get a hold of that clamp. See if we can't wiggle that down the hose a little bit. Okay, we've got that spun down the radiator hose. We'll let the old clamp loose. Get in here with the hose pick. Of course, they've got a guard on it, so we can't get in there with a hose pick. It makes it kind of a pain. Let me get a longer hose pick. See if we can't reach down on top of the hose here and just get behind it. It's a plastic housing, so it shouldn't be stuck too bad. We just want to get our hose pick underneath the hose without poking a hole in it. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so that's not stuck too bad. I've got that loose. I'm going to rearrange my bucket. Or at least tell you that I am so everybody feels better. Oh wow, that sucker is barely on there. That barb on that housing is probably only three quarters of an inch, so that comes off really easy. Okay, so that's good. As far as the hose that goes behind it here, that looks like it's gonna be a bit of a piss pot. Um, I've got a pair of cable clamp pliers we're going to reach behind it, see if we can get the clamp loose, and, and that is also plastic, so hopefully we can just push that down. Let's see if we can't. So it's these little guys here. Astro makes them. It allows you to grab a hose clamp. So we're going to fidget these up behind there. It's in a really convenient spot. Give it a squeeze. Oh, look at that. Convenient. Work it right down the hose. We'll disconnect this. And then I should be able to, oh, that's, yeah, that pushes off nice and easy because it's plastic and there is no corrosion. Oh, that's super, super duper. So there's that hose right above the AC compressor. Fantastic. So let's crack all these bolts loose, bunch of them. Mm, should be two more. I think it's 10 total. Should be loose now. Or you should be able to crack it loose anyways. Negative ghost shire. Let's see, let's make sure we got them all. Let me get a mirror. That's everybody, ain't it? I don't think I missed anybody. 
Yeah, it looks like everything. That should crack loose on us. You just don't want to persuade it until you know for sure. Uh, I'm giving her a little persuasion there with a the hook, which isn't a lot of persuasion. I'll tell you what, let's get the new water pump. I don't know if the bolts are all different lengths, so a good practice to, to do would, you know, take them out and let's just stick them in the water pump as we go. That makes sense to you. Whoa, man down. Let's spin these out here. These are the little guys that go on top. There's one. Right side, but they should be the same length. They all might be the same length, I don't know. But if you don't know, either look it up or just do what I'm doing. Ah, see they're not. The ding dong. So that one was there and this one was here. Just kind of a good practice because you don't want to try to figure it out going back together. Well, they're all freaking different lengths. And there, and we should have a couple more. This one here on the bottom. And then one more on the top. And I guess we get out the air hammer. So there is all of our bolts. That's what it looks like from the back side. You guys can see that. So that's all the bolts that hold that little fella together. I'm gonna set it over here in the box. I thought I saw a tab under here I could hook underneath. Yeah, baby! Just had to give her a little kumbaya there. Kumbaya, mother lover. And there's that. Dump that out. I'll clean up my mess, don't worry. Yeah, this thing was pissing out pretty good. Leaking right out of the bottom of the shaft there. All right, so that we'll have to transfer this clamp onto the new pump. And just set that to the side for a moment. Remove our gasket. And we're gonna take and clean this up. It should clean up pretty easy. It's aluminum, so choose wisely what you use to clean it up. I'm gonna use the carbide scraper. You just have to be careful with them on aluminum because if you stand this thing up on edge, boy, it'll cut through that stuff like a hot knife through butter. Some of it you can't see because it's way up under there. Neither can I, but we're going to do our best. Once you have that all cleaned up over there, I took a little bit of a green scotch brake pad and some brake clean and went over the aluminum surface too. So I went ahead and busted the thermostat off the old water pump there. Well, not busted it, but you know, took it off. These are not just your typical, you know, 499 thermostat. They're electric, of course. So we're just transferring this over. She wasn't having any problems with the thermostat. We're just gonna put a new gasket on it. We're gonna stick it right on this water pump stick it right back in until it dies I think I want to say these things are close to a hundred dollar bill from GM I could be wrong on that but I know they're up there in price so up to you whether or not you change it at this point I think we've done other videos on these where they um, you know they'll set a code when this thermostat heater element dies I think we've done a couple videos on those perhaps so I think I may have said that that's a coolant temp sensor, but I believe that's their thermostat heater. We'll look up the torque specs on everything here with all the different bolts, some of them going through the timing cover, some of them going onto the timing cover. The torque spec's gonna be a little bit more critical. Put that on there. All right, so let me look that up. And I think what we'll do, it came with a new gasket, uh, also a metal backed gasket like the OEM. So it looks like your paper gasket, but it's not. We're gonna transfer these bolts over into the old water pump. We're also not gonna forget to stick that baby on there, but we'll transfer these over. That way we, never, we don't have to worry about looking them up, who goes where. We can just drop them in and know that we are correct. 
I have the gasket on here and I just put two bolts. I just matched up two bolts. Now this plastic piece that goes behind the impeller here, that is, that is loose and it's loose on the um, OEM pump too and it sits down inside of a groove. So make sure you have that in the right position uh, you know, prior to installing it. So I'm just gonna use the two bolts to hold the gasket. Thermostat housing was a full 80 inch pounds. So we're gonna slip this down and around. We're gonna see if we can't just line up a couple of these bolt holes. Get it slid over here. And tighten up two of these just to kind of hold everything still for us. That lower radiator hose is hitting on me. There we go. I just wanna run these in finger tight, make sure it's sitting flush before we go put in all the rest of the bolts. I wanna make sure everybody's happy here. There are a couple bolts that you have to replace because they're torque to yield bolts. So make sure you do that. I'll show you when we go to tighten it down. So I'll put it up on your screen for you. The different number of bolts they are. A whole whopping 71 inch pounds. And number one and number eight, you're supposed to replace with a brand new one. So make sure you do that. 71 inch pounds, folks, if you don't have a torque wrench, is just a lick above finger tight. So, you know, if you're just guessing and going around, that's great. And you can do that. Just uh, don't go bananas with it. Just kind of bounce around here. These would be very easy to over torque. So yeah, this is 71 inch pounds, like I say. I mean, that's, that's it right there course this is on a 12 inch handle so it's, like I say it's very easy to over torque these or anything that's torqued that light so just kind of use your noodle eight nine or ten boom okay so that's all ten and then number one and number eight have to go an additional 30 degrees one-third of a quarter turn and that's why you have to replace them with uh, new ones so one-third of a quarter turn oops see if we can get this there's about 30 degrees that's number one this is number eight that's about 30 degrees so there you go so make sure you replace those two bolts for sure. So at this point, just put all this stuff back on you took off. We're gonna stick our clamp here. Must be a little bit of coolant left in that. Obviously, I did take the fluid extractor, sucked out the block and the lower radiator. It's got quite a bit of coolant out of it. Because I see, like I say, she does have it full of the universal junk. But I drained out the uh, coolant reservoir also. We're gonna see if we can get a hold of this clamp, open it back up, stick it right back on exactly in the spot that it was. Oh, I forgot to show you guys the end of that thermostat housing. Perhaps you saw it once we had it out there in the open. Man, that's crazy, because that hose clamp is about the same width. And right from the factory, they had the hose clamp brought right up to the end of the hose. Yeah, I can see the marks on it, it's pretty, pretty crazy. We will remake our electrical connections here. Plug in the thermostat. Plug in the cam sensor. Plug in the phaser. Push in the gray locks for the next guy. And I think that's it, folks. Put our tensioner back on. Hey, answer me this. Why in the hell did we take that thing off? Putting the cart ahead of the horse here a little bit, weren't we? Plus I wanted to just demonstrate to you how to take it off. For some reason in my mind it went through that thermostat, or through that water pump, but clearly it didn't. But it gave you guys the better viewing advantage. Not really. Am I kidding? Just didn't know what I was doing. Well, we're standing right here. I'll grab the three bolts for the pulley here. Get that baby back on there. Now 
and then go through and torque them to factory specs also. And we should be able to slip our mount in. Anybody remember how this thing goes? Can't be too hard, right? in your eyes pins on the ground around the crank around the tensioner around the alternator looks like we got a hold of everything anyways probably would be a smart idea to make sure we don't have any leaks prior to installing the deal here but I have faith I have faith in you guys that you did a good job. I don't have faith that I'm going to get the engine mount back in there, but I know you guys did a good job. Which way did it go, fellas? Like so. bit that should get us pretty close so that's all torqued I think we're good there's no reason we can't put this little guy on grab our torque wrench the number three setting on that two ugga duggas and then these here we'll get them down close Okay, and then we should be able to push the engine here, get exactly where it was. Perfect. And then go through and torque them to spec. And then you should be good to go. We're going to lube up the holes for the air filter. How many is there? Just three there and a couple up here on the core support. Oops, that's that sucker. That thing just sits on there, don't it? Well, that makes that pretty easy, look at that. We'll pop that off, I guess. I didn't know that. What we do now, sometimes we learn as we go. Stick it in there, stick it in there. Clip there, mass airflow there. Hook her back to the throttle body. This little guy needs to be hooked back up. I had that unhooked for your viewing pleasure. I think everybody's satisfied at this point. If anybody's still watching, that is. That doesn't make sense, fella. How did that go? Like this. That's clicked there. This little guy goes right here. And then we just need to get our 7mm. We're right back to where we started. No, well, kind of. Unhook the hose because you know you'll accidentally whap that trigger if you're not careful. Doodly do do. I don't think we missed anything. Except the. Up to what we did which I don't think we did everything looks good you guys did a good job 
Usually my guy Josh has six or seven of these open over there. I'm always throwing him under the bus, but I'm probably the one that does it. Well, I don't hear it pee peeing out, so that's a good thing. Let that kind of gurgle and do its thing. We'll keep filling up, then we'll fire it up. These usually bleed pretty easy because the engine's so low and the surge tank is so high. Usually it's not an issue. water pump on your 2018 Chevrolet with the big LUV 1.4 liter turbo that's the sound they make not a bad job don't know what else to say other than to tell you to head into that comment section go down there find me on the Insta the Facebook leave a comment subscribe the bell ring it you know just my reviewers if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching